Thank for you. our rock star speaker, keynote speaker, Colin Shaw, who just popped in and he's uh, welcoming you all. He's a customer experience pioneer from the USA. Colin founded Beyond Philosophy and wrote one of the world's first books on customer experience called Building Great Customer Experiences, Algrave Macmillan. This book created worldwide interest and high demand for Beyond Philosophy services. How smart. Colin has held many senior executive positions in his corporate life. And now he'll present about elusive customer emotion connection using technology. Welcome, Colin. So good to have you and over to you. Thank you very much and good to be here. And you can tell uh, I'm in America because it's just coming to dawn. So excuse all the lights on in the in the background. Um, the, this is a really interesting topic and um, uh, there's a few really important things that I want to get over to people. And I'm gonna start by talking about, trying to sort of set the scene for you, if I may. Um, I'm sure we've all done this, but imagine imagine that, that you are walking down this alleyway um, and or just about to walk down this alleyway. Uh, how many of us have have stopped and thought to ourselves, well, maybe we shouldn't walk down this alleyway. And, and what we're looking at here is we're looking at what what a, what an experience is. So we use the word customer experience. And for me, what we've got to do is we've got to define what an experience actually looks like. So imagine walking down this alleyway. I'm sure a number of us would have stopped and gone, maybe we shouldn't walk down here. So so what's happening there? OK. Uh, well, well, think about, you know, just look at the screen and think to yourself, well, why would you not walk down this alleyway? What are the things there that would stop you from walking down? Uh, and you're probably going, well, it's a bit dark. There's high walls. I can't see what's at the end. Uh, those of you that are particularly attentive will see the graffiti on the walls on the on the left hand side. There's no one there. Uh, maybe the week before you heard of somebody being attacked in in similar circumstances. And so what's happening here is you're taking a rational action, okay? So the rational action is that you've stopped. So the interesting question is, why have you stopped? And the reason that you've stopped is because of emotion, because you're feeling scared or anxious or fearful uh, or whatever. Uh, um, um, and why are you feeling emotion? Well, um, you're feeling emotion because of your subconscious okay so we have we have the conscious level of experience and we have the subconscious level so what do we mean by subconscious uh, if i said to you think about the fact that you're breathing okay um think about the fact that you know you've just breathed in and you've just breathed out okay um before you were breathing um i hope so anyway uh, but, you know, now that you're suddenly conscious of the fact that you're breathing. So it's been raised to that conscious level. Why am I talking about this? Well, because your subconscious is scanning the environment and it sees and picks up all the signs that we just talked about. The graffiti on the walls, the darkened doorways, the high walls, the fact that no one's there. And what it does is your subconscious sees those things and it presses a button in your brain called fear you feel an emotion and then you act okay and the last part of the jigsaw puzzle is this whole area of psychology which is really just understanding you as a human being okay uh, and understanding your customers okay as people so people interact with things they interact face to face they interact with contact centers, they interact digitally. But ultimately, what we're looking at at the screen here is what this is all about. And this comes under this heading, uh, these three areas come under this heading of behavioral science, okay? And behavioral science is looking at what, how people behave. And here's the interesting thing, that um, uh, this is, uh, my second book was about customer centricity. So I always find this a bit, uh, surprising to say, but sometimes you can't listen to what your customers tell you because they don't know why they're doing things themselves. And th this is a topic that we, if you're interested in all this, we do a weekly podcast called The Intuitive Customer, where me and a professor of consumer psychology talk all about this stuff and how it applies to customer 
experience and you can get the podcast wherever you search from. So let, let's talk about how this interacts with technology. Um, do, you like, do you like my glasses? Um, I, I bought these glasses a little while ago and during the pandemic, I decided not to go to the store. So I bought them online uh, from this company called uh, Direct Line. And, and it was all good. I put my prescription details in. They sent the different frames that I could choose from at home. I sent them back. I chose the frame. I then put the prescription details in. And then I get an email back because I ask for different, you know, long sight and short sighted glasses. Um, they, they said to me that they needed to find out where exactly my eyes were, you know, how the distance of my eyes. OK, uh, which makes sense. But what they asked me to do sent sent an emotion through me okay so interacting with technology and and this is what they asked me to do they asked me to get a credit card and they asked me to put it on my forehead like this and they then asked me to take a picture okay now i i don't know about you but i feel pretty bloody stupid with this on my head so i'm standing here now taking a picture and i'm thinking to myself this this is not only making me feel pretty stupid, but surely the you know I understand you know they're they're now taking the lines and going well, but I thought surely they could could do something better than this. Okay, so interacting with technology, I'm feeling well. Do I really trust this organisation when I get the glasses back? Are they going to work? Now I hasten to add they're absolutely fine, uh, but you know I'm feeling an emotion. Another example, um, we were we we dealt a lot with Survey Monkey over the years, uh, and we decided that we weren't going to carry on the subscription, and we'd had it on automatic renewal. Um, when I cancelled the uh, one of the team cancelled the automatic renewal, this, this came up, and they you know they they came to me and asked me what to do, uh, and and you can see here that I got this massive discount. Okay, if I kept automatic renewal on, my immediate reaction to this was i've been overcharged for years if i hadn't have had it on automatic renewal i would have saved about a third of my costs and that really bugged me again an emotion didn't speak to anybody uh, but an emotion and now i'm telling lots of people about it on the other side of the the fence we have good emotions that that technology evoke okay uh, and here's an example. This is I, I love music. I listen to music all the time uh, and Spotify. I, I love. Uh, and, you know, every periodically they send you details of, well, what's been your top song and um, and how many times have you played this one? And, you know, all that these types of details, which I think is great because it really sort of engages me and stuff like that. So what am I trying to say to say to you? What I'm trying to say to you is. You have to, it's not about the technology, it's about the person and how the person feels. And you need to understand that emotions drive behavior, okay? And what we need to focus on is, is what drives behavior. So back in 2007, uh, this is, I've written seven books now um, on customer experience. And this was about my third book because what I wanted to find was that uh, if emotions drive behavior, the challenge that lots of our clients was were, were giving us at the time was, yeah, this is all interesting stuff, Colin, but, um, you know, does this apply uh, in our area? Does this apply in the region? Does this apply with our, uh, with our customers? And moreover, prove to me that emotions drive value. So we did two years worth of research with London Business School to identify the emotions that drive and destroy value. Okay, now when I say value, I'm talking about what the organization gets. So things like net promoter score, uh, things like uh, improved retention, things like loyalty, um, things like uh, people returning, share of wallet, whatever it, it, it may be. And by the way, we have worked in, in the region. We've worked in Dubai. We've worked in Saudi. We've used these tools uh, in, uh, in, in the region. Uh, and, and we know the same applies, okay, because these are basic core human emotions. And what you're seeing here is there's a destroying cluster of emotions. 
uh, which is if you're evoking these emotions, then you your your customers will will uh, you'll end up getting less net promoter, less um, uh, improvements in retention, loyalty. You've then got the attention cluster. So this is what's the attention cluster? Well, it's customers going uh, or organizations going. Um, you know, look at us. Okay, so you're interested in the in what they're they're selling, what they're marketing. You're feeling stimulated. You explore it. Next level up is recommendation. Okay, and then the final level up uh, is happy and pleased. Okay, so this was all the work we did with London Business School. So. Here's the question for you that I've got, which is really, really, really important for you. Um, and that is, what emotions are you trying to evoke in your customers? Okay. What emotions are you trying to evoke in your customers? And are those emotions, do they drive value for you? So if you evoke those, do you get something back? And therefore, how do you design your experience to ensure that you evoke those emotions. And, and this goes back to my first comment about sometimes you, you have to sort of ignore what customers tell you because what you have here is, you, know, you can see this access, you've got what customers tell you, okay? And then you've got what drives value. So what customers are saying to you that they want, yeah? And what actually gives you a return, you know, improves net promoter, et cetera. And in the top right hand corner, we've got here, um, we've got here conscious, the things that you're conscious of. Okay. Um, so those are things that the customers say that they want and drive value. Those, those are great. But the two most interesting boxes are the deception and the subconscious. So deception is when a customer says that they want something, but you can show it doesn't drive value. So the example I always use. Uh, is that Disney know when they ask people to go to a Disney theme park, that Disney know that people say they'd like to have an option of a salad, okay? But people don't eat salads when they go to theme parks. They eat hot dogs and hamburgers. Uh, we had another example of a hospital system in, in, uh, in Houston, in, in the States, where the perceived wisdom of the organization was that um, patients were saying that they needed to spend more time with doctors, okay? So we need to spend more time with doctors, so they were just about to increase the length of time that they had with doctors. We did this special form of research uh, that we used to get under here called the emotional signature, and what we discovered was it wasn't that the patients wanted to spend more time with doctors. What it was was that they wanted to feel that the doctor had listened to them, okay? So listening, they felt they wanted to feel the doctor had listened to them and they had in their minds converted that to, well, I need to spend more time with them. OK, but that, you know, so listening to the patient becomes really important. And therefore, what you do to get to listen to the patient becomes, uh, you know, different to just extending the time. The irony was you could spend more time listening, sorry, more time with the patient. But if you didn't listen to them, it would actually reduce customer satisfaction. The final area is this subconscious, this top left-hand box. So these are the things that customers don't necessarily say that can tell you. So that's the classic, as I've just said there, of listening to the patient, okay? Or, or the patient wanting to listen to them. You've got to get under the skin of it. You've got to get into that subconscious. You've got to get into what drives behavior, okay? The, the final thing that I want to share with you today, uh, and then we can see if there are any questions, but this is the, this is probably the biggest thing that I've learned in the last 10 years, okay? And this for me, for everyone on this call today, is really profound, okay? There's a guy called uh, Professor Daniel Kahneman, just, just Google his name. Professor Kahneman is, is, um, has won the Nobel Prize for behavioral economics, behavioral science, okay? Uh, and what Kahneman talks about, and this is a subject that's fascinating me that we, we talk a lot about on the podcast. Uh, what Kahneman talks about is the fact that, you know, if you think about it, 
we don't choose between experiences. We choose between the memory of an experience. Okay, so just think about this again, because this is really important. We don't choose between experiences. We choose between the memory of those experiences. So think about it. When you're going to go to a restaurant, when you're going to, you know, do something that's a repeat purchase, purchase, i.e. you are loyal to that organization, it is based upon your memory of what, what they've had before, okay? So, you know, by definition, you can't be loyal to something because that means you've been back unless you remember it. So, again, if you think about it, memory is a function of loyalty, okay? So memory is really, really important. And I go back to that phrase. People don't choose between experiences. They choose between the memory of those experiences. The experiences I told you earlier about Spotify, um, uh, about where I bought my classes, are memories, okay? So the interesting question becomes, how are memories formed? And what Kahneman talks about is the fact of this, as you can see here, this peak end rule, okay? So what's the peak end rule? What Kahneman talks about is what people remember is they remember the peak emotion that they felt and they remember the end emotion that they felt. So in your experience, they remember the peak emotion and they remember the end emotion. So buying my glasses, the peak emotion I felt was one of stupidity as I had the credit card on my head. That was the peak emotion. That sort of indelibly linked into my brain now, okay? And the end emotion that I felt in that experience was uncertainty. Is the glasses going to be okay? Will the glasses be okay, you know, given that they asked me to put a credit card on my head, okay? So, and, and that peak and that end can be positive or negative. So, this raises some really, really interesting questions. And this ties back to what I was just saying about emotions. So, question one. What emotions are you trying to evoke in your customers? In that digital design or call center design or omni-channel design, what emotions are you trying to evoke? Where is the peak emotion that you are currently evoking in your customer? So in that digital experience, whatever ever experience, call center experience, whatever it may be, where is the peak emotion and what emotion is it? And is it the emotion that you want? And does it drive value for you? Yeah. Do you get a return for it? And without giving it, taking this step back and understanding these sort of four things, these four aspects of rational action, emotion, subconscious, and psychological, you know, you're not going to get the best out of your experience. So, you know, so in summary, emotions, for me, it's not about whether emotions, are, you know, are elusive. It, it, it's thinking about, well, how are emotions formed? OK, and they're formed by this peak end rule. OK, how are emotions formed? How do we design our experience, our digital experience to feel those emotions? How do we measure those emotions with our customers? And do they drive value for you? OK, uh, as part of that uh, experience. So I think we may have a couple of minutes uh, left. If there are any questions, then please let us know. If you're interested in all of these topics, as, as I said before, then um, uh, please just search for the Intuitive Customer Podcast wherever you get your podcast from. Um, I don't know if there are any questions. Um, thanks for the great insights. Good, thank you. Thank you, Colin, so much for that enlightening and, shall I say, emotional session. Emotions do drive consumer behavior and value. I can clearly see now why our viewers are so excited about your session. 